Hi everyone, Tams here. In this video, I'm going to attempt to answer the questions I have received since I announced a couple of weeks ago that I was going to do a Q&A video. So thank you so much. Several of you actually wrote me a letter during the month of April and I received some private messages on Facebook and Instagram and also YouTube and there was a theme <laughs> running through. And everyone wants me to talk more about moon gardening. So I'm going to try to do that. So first off, there's two different things that I feel like are going on that I've been sharing on my channel. And I want to clarify. First of all, there's a lot of people who are interested in this, this perpetual moon calendar that I shared last year, I think, or it, I've shared it a long time ago. And um, this is about gardening by the phases of the moon. This is for any type of gardening, vegetable garden, flower garden, butterfly garden, what have you, any type of gardening by the phases of the moon. The second thing I've shared with you is I actually have something in a corner of my home called a moon garden. <laughs> so um, that's a little bit different. Um, a moon garden is really just a garden planted with all white flowers or silvery reflective um, foliage and the intent is to plant things in an area that will reflect the moonlight. Um, so I'll get into that more in a minute but first because this is the most popular thing and I've been promising to somehow show you how I did this um, I'm going to break it down for you. Okay first of all I saw this thing online last year and I tried to order one but they were out of stock and I'm going to link below exactly what I was looking at and I think it's still out of stock <laughs> but I'll link it below so that you can see a better picture now theirs is a lot prettier than mine um, I just handmade mine um, and theirs is a much nicer quality than mine but you can see where I got the idea from you can maybe reach out to the people that um, have it on their site and see if they maybe have some more if you want a nicer one and you are not interested in, um, you know, making one yourself. But I'm going to show you what I did. Now, first of all, what is this? Um, a perpetual moon calendar. Um, you know, I grew up with mostly farmers in my family. It was not unusual for them to follow the farmer's almanac. I think people still do it today in agribusiness states. It's not unusual at all. But, you know, you, you basically look at the phase of the moon to determine when to plant, when to sow, when to prune, when to harvest, such as that. And what this does is this um, just gives you a perpetual calendar to determine when you need to do that. And so, for instance, tonight is a full moon, the first full moon of May. So today is the 10th. So I would find the, new, the full moon, which is this one, and I would line it up on the 10th. So you can see I've got it set. So it's lined up on the 10th. And for the next few days, from the 10th through the 14th, it suggests that I cultivate only during the full moon. Um, and then right after that, it says the next two days, the 15th through the 17th, um, are good for root crops and for spraying. Uh, and then uh, from the 17th to the 22nd, um, it, it tells me that it's a bearing period. There's low sap. Um, it says to... Um, do your pruning at that point. So you get the idea and it's called a perpetual moon calendar because you just change it around each each time the moon changes phases. You just line it up with the date of the month and you follow it. Um, so what did I do to make this? Okay, um, like I said the one that I'm linking below is way nicer than mine but the easiest way to do this I took some like some card, some particle board. Um, I think I actually took an old box and cut it up. Um, but you'll start with two circles. And essentially, you can decide what your diameter of the circle is. Let's say this is six inches in diameter. So you cut, you get your compass out and you cut out a six inch in diameter circle and then you cut out another one that's an inch smaller. So if this is six inches in diameter, 
you cut this one five inches in diameter, okay? Um, sorry. And then you just, you know, you line it up. Um, and I'll get to the drawings next. And then all I did was I took one of these little things you get from the craft store. And I punched a hole in the center. And then I put this there so that it would spin. Okay? You can see that? And to see what, to, to determine what to write, now I did not write everything that the beautiful one online has. I just kind of gathered the basic information. And I first wrote it in pencil, okay? So the outer rim, you divide into 30 days. Uh, um, sometimes, yes, there's um, more or less than 30 days. But, um, <laughs> but you can take a look at the one that's online and they give you a big enough picture, um, you know, if, if, if you want to attempt this. Um, they give you a big enough picture to see exactly what it says, um, you know, how many days are represented. And that's all I did. I just um, wrote in pencil first, and I, then I went over it with both um, a Sharpie and a Micron pen. And I got a little fancy here in the middle, as you can tell. That was uh, dumb luck. Um, but I played around with some handwriting and I have shown you guys handwriting tricks on how to just take your regular handwriting and make it look a little fancier. Um, if you want to see that video, I will link it below. Okay, so that's, that's how I made this. And I would do a more fancy overhead shot how to, but quite honestly, I did this at like 2 a.m. in the morning and I really don't feel like I'm the expert on how to make it when there's a very beautiful product online that's available <laughs> but that's that's often how I make things in the middle of the night I'll get inspired and I'll sit down and I'll make something um, so that's gardening by the moon and using a moon calendar to determine you know when to plant when to cultivate when to uh, prune what have you when to spray okay the second topic is my actual moon garden now I have in the northeast corner of my backyard, an area that was just total yuck. Um, nothing would grow there because it would only get a couple of hours of sunlight in the morning. And then it's pretty much a shade garden, except it will get some dappled sun here and there. And um, I started to kind of get an idea about it last season. I didn't plant a whole lot last season. I planted some gardenias that were given to me out of someone else's yard. I planted something called a white candle plant that my local nursery um, helped me to pick out. And I planted some Carolina jasmine over top of an arbor. And that's pretty much it. I was kind of playing around with a lot of other things. And most of what's in it right now, I planted in the last month or so. Um, if you do not know anything about uh, moon gardening plants, again, you look for plants that have a white flower. Uh, ideally, you find something that's native to your area or friendly to your area. I have really been working hard to plant um, more drought-tolerant, Florida-friendly, Florida-native type plants. I've gotten quite a bit of help from my local garden stores, not the chain garden stores. Most of them will look at you like you have three heads when you ask them about a moon garden. But both my local garden stores, when I went in and asked them, if they knew about moon gardens, they knew exactly what I was talking about. And one of them actually has their own moon garden. So she's been very helpful. Um, around here, if you're in the central Florida area, I use Peterson's Nursery and, um, and she actually has her own moon garden. And I also use the greenhouse. I'll link both shops below. I'm not affiliated with either one of them. I'm just telling you they're extremely helpful if you happen to be in central Florida and you're looking for help on this. So what I thought I would do is give you a little tour of the moon garden. Now a lot of people have complained that when I do any type of motion video they get sick. Well that's because I do not have a fancy camera nor will I be investing in any type of fancy camera unless for some um, you know, miracle I go viral on YouTube. <laughs> Which I don't think is going to happen but anyway. Um, I'm going to walk you through very quickly now. It's the evening, um, it's, it's uh, the afternoon so it's some dappled sun, so it's not the best lighting right now, but you can get an idea of what it looks like. So this is the moon garden. It is in its 
infant stage, but around the palm tree I've planted white lantana. And then over to this side, it's a little hard to see, but I have white plumbago, some tea olives, a white candle, and some white firecracker. And then over on this side, I have another white plumbago, a sweet almond, pinwheel jasmine, moringa tree that I just planted. It's already grown a foot. And um, some diamond frost. I'm going to walk on around. Hopefully not make you too sick. Okay. And up on the fence, I have my driftwood collection with air plants sea glass, lots of succulents that are slowly um, taken over. And then there's my arbor that goes back into my potting area. So I'll show you that. Quickly glimpse into there. I've shared that before. And here is my afternoon seating area with my cocktail. Again, things fill up very quickly in Florida, so I have had to learn a lot about not only the plants, but spacing. So it may seem to you that things are spaced far apart, but really in Florida, you have to space things far apart because they will grow very fast compared to plants that I grew up with in Virginia and North Carolina. So that's been a whole learning curve for me. But I hope this was helpful. I hope I have addressed all your moon garden questions. As far as the history of the white moon garden, that's quite interesting. I haven't been able to find a whole lot of information about it. But it's my understanding that it originated with the Victorians and they wanted to spend time in their gardens in the evenings during the summer because it was so hot and it was cooler at night and the moon would reflect the white flowers um, much better than you know some of the other flowers so I think it originated with the Victorians. I've also read that there were several moon gardens in India again for the heat and wanting to be outside um, at night and having something reflecting the moonlight so there you go that's all I know about that. My neighbors told me about moon gardening. My neighbors have been gardening mentors for me so I feel very lucky to have them and I'm happy to share with you what a moon garden is and also what gardening by the moon is. I hope you get outside tonight and enjoy the May full moon and I'll see you next time. Thank you.